When the Vietnam War broke out in 1965, the introduction of the Bell UH-1 single-engine attack helicopter quickly proved a game-changer in air cavalry. However, despite its tremendous capability for quickly transporting troops to the front lines, it was also highly vulnerable against enemy fire. This led Bell to design a helicopter gunship that could escort troops to landing zones and improve their survivability. The new model was dubbed the Cobra, after its slender yet lethal design. Armed with a chin-mounted M28 turret with two 7.68mm miniguns, or two 40mm M129 grenade launchers, and over 20 missiles, the Huey Cobra quickly became the apex predator of the Vietnamese countryside. With the capacity to pour over 4,000 minigun rounds per minute and launch a dozen rockets in a matter of seconds, watching a Cobra approach from afar was not a welcoming sight for any Vietnamese hidden in the jungle. Evolution During the last days of World War II, several militaries developed rudimentary helicopter prototypes for an array of different uses. However, the United States Army soon managed to produce a fully functional helicopter that saw actual action and was thus built in large quantities. Its name was the Sikorsky R-4, and it was developed by Russian-American aviation pioneer Igor Sikorsky. Despite its limited use, the R-4 paved the way for such a vehicle as an attack and support aircraft that could transport troops and supplies while also engaging the enemy if necessary. During the 1950s and the Korean War, the helicopter proved its worth as an essential air asset for ground troops, with its role as a medical station to attend and extract the wounded, or as a means to land reinforcements in dangerous areas, the helicopter opened an array of new air tactics and operations. Then, after a deep war analysis between the French and the Vietnamese during the First Indochina War, the United States military realized the formation of an air unit entirely focused on helicopters. In 1962, a Pentagon study group called the House Board proposed the creation of a rotary wing aircraft specially fitted for the upcoming air mobility mission and an air cavalry combat brigade. However, no aircraft company developed an authentic attack helicopter while the war in Vietnam escalated with the American presence, and the conventional Bell Huey had to fend for itself for the time being. Attack Helicopters Bell Helicopter developed the most iconic aircraft of the Vietnam War, the Bell UH-1 Iroquois. It made the theory of air cavalry practical, making U.S. forces highly mobile. However, it lacked enough armament to stand on its own against the hostile Vietnamese. The Hueys were equipped with transport and medevac roles, and became highly vulnerable against ground fire from Vietnamese troops that awaited in the canopy as the helicopters came down to the landing zones. Although the designation of the Huey, UH, stood for Utility Helicopter, Bell sought a solution to their helicopter losses and began modifying them with lethal armament. The company then equipped some Hueys with side-door machine guns and rockets, and although these modified gunships proved valuable in protecting their transport counterparts, they still could not fly over 90 miles per hour and could barely keep up with the aircraft they sought to protect. As inter-service rivalry rose between the Army and the Air Force regarding what type of aircraft the Army could operate, Bell launched a secret project to develop its first attack helicopter. The program resulted in the D-255 Iroquois Scout Helicopter, also known as the Iroquois Warrior. It had a slender fuselage, a tandem cockpit, a 40mm chin-mounted rocket launcher, and a devastating 20mm ventral cannon. More importantly, besides its futuristic look, its slim profile made the Iroquois a more challenging target to hit by enemy ground fire. The Army liked the helicopter and awarded Bell a proof-of-concept contract. Bell then used a modified Model 47 that became known as the Model 207 Sioux Scout and flew it for the first time in July of 1963. Still, after further evaluation, the Army decided that the Sioux Scout was underpowered and unsuitable for operational use. Subsequently, the Army made a public request asking for designs for an Advanced Aerial Fire Support System, or AAFSS. The specifications called for a powerful attack helicopter with miniguns, rockets, and every offensive arsenal to protect the Hueys. 
It also called for a helicopter with an approximate speed of 200 to 250 miles per hour. The Army desperately required a gunship or attack helicopter to support transport UH-1s, and seven companies responded to the call. Again, Bell would rise to the task. An urgent matter. While the AAFSS program favored Lockheed's AH-56 Cheyenne, a heavy attack helicopter that would take almost a decade to complete, Bell decided to carry on with its own attack helicopter for the Vietnam War. By January of 1965, once the US and the North Vietnamese were at war after the Gulf of Tonkin incident, Bell had come up with a small, light gunship that had evolved from the Sioux Scout. After investing a million dollars in a new concept that blended the best features of the UH-1 Huey, such as its rotor system and the turboshaft engine, with the overall design and the slender and futuristic-looking Sioux Scout, the company came up with Model 209. This model had an aggressive design that gave an aura of speed, violence, and maneuverability, precisely what the company was looking for. It also had a narrow fuselage with a tandem cockpit arrangement where the gunner was seated in the forward position and both the pilot and the gunner were then protected by a fighter-like canopy. Besides a chin-mounted gun, Model 209 featured stub wings on either side of the fuselage with hard points for carrying rockets and missiles. The prototype flew for the first time in September of 1965, and as the AAFSS project stalled, the U.S. Army called for the immediate submission of an interim gunship. Bell emerged victorious in April of 1966 and received a contract to produce 110 aircraft. The helicopter was quickly dubbed the AH-1 Cobra. The Predator of the Skies The Cobra received several design improvements during production. Some included fixed skids, a plexiglass canopy, and the tail rotor's position, which shifted from the left to the right side. The Vietnam War era models featured a T-53 L-13 turboshaft engine that provided a maximum speed of 170 miles per hour, a service ceiling of 11,000 feet, a rate of climb of 1,200 feet per minute, and an estimated range of 360 miles. The Cobra also featured a chin-mounted M28 turret with two 7.68mm miniguns or two 40mm M129 grenade launchers. In addition, its turret could be fitted with a mix of the two and was armed with a pantograph sight operated by the front seater or gunner. Meanwhile, the wing tube had space for seven or 19 2.75-inch rocket pods, XM195 cannon pods or minigun pods, with subsequent modifications including anti-tank support. The Cobras were first delivered in late 1967 to Bien Hoa Air Base in Vietnam and immediately dispatched to the front lines, where they quickly proved their worth in combat. Military Service In September, a Cobra scored its first hit during an escort mission, after sinking a sampan boat with a squad of Viet Cong guerrillas. Then, a month later, the 334th Assault Helicopter Company was declared operational. It was the first Cobra unit. Also known as the Snakes, the attack helicopters became the essential escort of UH-1 Hueys, while also providing cover for the troops on the ground. They would also be sent in teams to hunt down the enemies detected by OH-6A scout helicopters or little birds. The Cobras were also integrated into aerial rocket artillery battalions thanks to the substantial rocket fire they carried under their wings. During an interview with the Smithsonian, seasoned 1st Air Cavalry pilot Walker Jones pointed out that all Cobra pilots were volunteers, quote, Cobra pilots tended to be take-charge types. We were the ones who wanted to shoot. We had the most responsibility, day-to-day, -day, of any other helicopter pilot in the Army. The attack helicopters were sent to combat with twice as much ammunition as Huey gunships, because they were expected to clean up a zone infested with enemies before the Huey transports could safely land troops. Besides, they were faster and could linger in the air for much longer while decimating the enemy with minigun and rocket fire to clear landing zones. The Cobras would also roll in on their targets during hunting parties while the gunners suppressed them with minigun fire. Then, as the Cobra approached the release point, the gunner would stop shooting to allow the backseat pilot to launch the rockets. Once done, the Cobra would pull out of its dive while the gunner re-engaged the enemy until the nose was high enough that he could not shoot him. 
When operating alongside little birds, the cobras flew high above canopy level. In contrast, the little birds tried to draw enemy fire at treetop level, as if they were prey. Once the Vietnamese opened fire from a concealed position, the little birds would pop up a smoke grenade and mark the spot with it. The cobras would then fly down like predators and concentrate their minigun and rocket fire until enemy resistance scattered. Still, getting so close to the enemy was often dangerous, and AK-47 fire could prove fatal. Despite wearing 22-pound chicken plate body armor, the pilots were often injured by small arms fire. Like Huey's, the Cobras were also shot down by 51 caliber machine guns and anti-aircraft fire from SAMs and shoulder-fired missiles. A year later, in 1968, the Marine Corps would adopt an upgraded variant, the AH-1J Sea Cobra. Legacy The tremendous success of the Cobra during the Vietnam War led to its subsequent adoption by South Korea, Japan, Pakistan, Israel, Spain, and other countries. After Vietnam, many of the early Cobras made their way to the Middle East and were employed during Israel's wars against its neighbors, the Lebanon War, and the fight against Hezbollah. The U.S. Cobras also saw combat during the invasions of Grenada, Panama, and the Gulf War. The U.S. Army and the Marines have also built more variants with improved speeds, armor, and offensive arsenal, such as the AH-1W Super Cobra and the AH-1Z Viper, models that continue to serve with the United States Marine Corps and all over the world to this day. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of the Cobra's role during the Vietnam War. Also hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.